Well, hello and welcome to Physics Games. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use software to generate entire map-sized cities in seven days to die. I've been utterly fascinated with trying to do this for a very long time and only recently handcrafted by placing randomly well-generated tiles and all the POIs on a 1K city map. Now, I've worked out how to do this with Terragon software and I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step guide on how to do this yourself. And if you just want to download the maps, I've made them for you too, and they're available for download right now. So hopefully today I can earn your subscription, and also you give me a thumbs up and a comment too, because that'll get this video out to more people. So sit back and relax, and I'll show you how to make these mega cities here on Physics Games. <laughs> To begin with, I need to mention where you can get your hands on everything that's mentioned today. Links to the software, downloads of the maps, and of course a wonderful community in the Physics Laboratory. You can join up and become one of the Lab Rats where we play and we build and we do everything to do with Seven Days to Die as a community. I'll see you over there. No, your eyes do not deceive you. I am beginning with Nitrogen World Generator, which is a very old piece of software we used in Alpha 19. It was never updated for the new systems in Alpha 20 and beyond, but will generate maps very, very quickly for me, and I'll be able to remove and take with me to Terragon the flat map information. We need the flat map so we can get a complete and utter city easily made. Once downloaded, extracted, we're going to run the nitrogen.exe file, and this is what we're presented with. Now, by default, it always this is a map name of nitrogen map and if you don't change this then you keep overwriting the maps that you generate each time so i'm going to change this to 8k flat so i know which one this is and we're going to generate an 8k flat map you can go smaller you can go bigger of course and i've done this already for you uh, where these things are all available for download this number we ignore this is for custom there's our output folder and then if you could pause the screen and have a look and basically what i've done is i've told it to have a completely flat and smooth and very flat landscape and I've just turned off all the other options that I can because I want this to be very quick. Once I get to the end, I can also set the landscape manually and I can just drag this across, making everything flat. And all I do is hit Generate World. This only takes a few seconds, as you can see. And then what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to open our output folder. And in here, we will see a beautiful little folder called 8K Flat. When I go into here, we can see the preview of the map. It's created some biomes, all of this kind of thing. But the interesting thing as it finishes the generation here is it produces is this one here which is gen hm the height map and it's a png a portable network graphics file what i want to do here is i want to take this and i'm going to rename it just because i've got many of these and i'll call this 8k now this file compared to all the others is all i need so if i just delete the entire rest of them now this is the one file and it shows a complete flat perfectly sized 8k map we're going to take this and we're going to copy and paste it and use it elsewhere with tarragon you can also use any graphics package to create these files but the size of those files is very very important and here we have a file that is flat because everything has an rgb value of 39 for me or an html code of hash 27 27 27 and i've used this to create 1k and 2k size maps as well so once you followed the download links and you've downloaded and extracted Terragon, here is the folder on my desktop. And I've also got just awaiting there the 8K Gen HM, the height map that we needed. We're going to open this up and execute the program and we'll see a few little screens. So once you've been through all the initial pop-up screens, this is what you're presented with. On the left-hand side, we're going to be able to change all our options. Now we've got basic, we've got advanced and expert. When I talk about basic options, I'm going to be talking about these two here, basic and advanced. There's only a couple of things to tick. An expert, this is the whole section that we've got to change many different variables in order to make these giant cities. Before we get going though, we need the height map in the correct place. So by pressing the Windows key or by clicking on the start button, we can immediately type percentage app data percentage and hit enter and this set of directories appears in front of you you'll need to click through from app data to roaming to seven days to die and then into your generated world folders and we're going to create a folder with the name that we wish so we're going to make an 8k city today and in this folder we're going to paste our 8k gen hm graphics file now back over to tarragon we're going to pick this world here by clicking on 8k city and this is going to be where we generate our map today now it says the world already exists but that's okay because once we've done some setup it will just overwrite every time we generate a map until we get the one we perfectly want 
Let's get stuck in then and we have the basic tab to begin with and all of these settings will be changed in the expert tab but I'm going to go through them anyway just so you know what they are and we have our world siege you can put any set of numbers or anything you want in there. We've got our world size which we can change and we're going to stick with 8k. It does say game version alpha 20.60 and I'm running 20.70 at the moment but that doesn't really matter at all at the moment. And what do we got? Erosion, preview, rivers. We don't want any rivers. I don't want any those are my cities right now and the diffuse biome transitions are quite nice we could leave those on but we might turn those off in the expert mode and then all of these well we are certainly going to change those in expert mode this is the one of the critical things here is getting all of these values correct to make a giant city and then if we click on advanced then we have say preset when run which is a good idea to do install terragon pois bridges and more now there's lots and lots of different pois you can add with terragon but we're, we're going to stick with vanilla and of course when alpha 21 comes out very very soon I'll be generating all of these maps again and you'll be able to download everything updated on the discord add installation script for the generated worlds well we don't need that because these are going to be very basic files without these Terrigen POIs and do I want to use them no nope, I don't want to install them I don't want to use them I want to get onto expert mode in the expert menu now we can see on the left hand side the available commands that we have and many of those are already in the command queue as it comes straight out of the box when you unzip the file as the program runs it goes through these and generates the file allows you to see it in the 2d preview and eventually exports it to your world generated files so we've got to change this so it does the job but first straight as i say out the box i'm going to hit run and we're going to see what we get there we are we've spent one minute and 55 seconds on my machine and of course it does depend on the speed of your machine how quickly it works but we have a message saying it's now complete and the whole list of command queues has paused because of this option here the interrupt and we can continue to generate the map as we see it we can see a nice crater here a few hills and a few scattered around cities towns and wilderness pois now of course if you hit continue it will then export everything but if you're not happy with what's on the right hand side of the screen you can click stop so let's scroll back up up to the top and set this up for mega cities i'm going to uh keep some of them and uh change some of them and also some of them are already crossed out but i'm not going to mess with those at the moment we want to save our preset then clear our variables and then once we've clicked on clear variables we're going to go over to the available commands because we want to import our height map and we need to go to import height map and click on this little arrow this adds this little section here and in this area we can see it's enabled and we are going to have my height map and in here we're going to paste the name of the file we're going to be using and in this case we're going to be doing an 8k and we generated the 8k genhm.png which we placed in the correct folder the custom tag has our seed in it the set world size is definitely on 8k still there's a couple of copy files that are blanked out set game data nothing Nothing to do there and we're not going to do anything with this either then we come down to the read poi property list now we have absolutely not included these terrigan pois we've already kind of got rid of them just out of habit i'm going to press forward slash forward slash space on both of these lines just to kind of blank them out so they become readable text but nothing that the program can actually read and below there as a list of all of these pois available in seven days to die that it's going to pick from next is read town property list and here we can see the information for standard cities known as regular towns small towns and the old west towns now again i'm going to put forward slash forward slash space in front of these two because i don't want any of those i just want full cities to be made only and i only need the first line then going down to create text data we don't need to change that and then we get to create flat height map now we don't need to do that because we are we've already got one haven't we we've already imported one of these and then underneath it are all the these different things highlighted white and in grey and these make the height map change and it creates mountains and hills and kind of the general slopes that we have in the game and all of these starting with create flat height map we want to unenable and they're all going to be crossed out and there we go we've got all of these crossed out we don't need any of them if you read the actual manual that comes with this the, the documentation to help you with it they also say if you're going to be doing something flat or a big city then you can get rid of filter logistic square mask but i don't want to do that because i've used this in a certain way in order to get the edges very nice and sloped just in the right way so on here i've changed the steepness from 0 0.05 to 0 0.02 and in this 
trim at midpoint, which is kind of a mathematical equation to get things working, the last section says 400, and I turn that to 200. Then we have another three different things. Yes, three different things that we're not going to change. And if I scroll up here, we then get to scale height map. Now, I've watched other videos before where they've changed these values in order to get big cities. But the best option that I've got is to get a minimum layer of 40, which basically means that you have the default three bedrock plus 37 blocks before you get to the very edge of the map where it's the lowest. And the maximum layer height, then I make this 60. And that means it slopes up the 20 blocks up to where your city is and then you've got enough room in depth and above for any POI to spawn correctly. We had a crater in the initial map that we've made and we can now unenable that so we don't want that there and then we get onto the first of the super super important ones this is create flat water map and we need to change this value and it depends on which size map you're making now for an 8k map we want to turn this to 58 and that means that the water level is going to be we, we set it didn't we to 40 as the base level and 60 to the highest level and if we set this to 58 then it will come up right to the edge of our city map if you make this a little bit lower, then you can actually fit in more POIs. I'm trying to get the right combination in order to make a full city map with lots of traders that I'm going to be showing you later on. Then we get to fill area with biome, and you may be wanting to make um, a, a map that's a single biome, or you might want to have various biomes within your giant city. But in the end, you need to set your base biome. And if we're having a single one, well, we'll start with, let's say, Wasteland. That's the default. But there's all the others that you can pick from. Now, down here, we have create noise biome map and this one is off by default if we enable that then instead of getting a single biome on these maps we're going to get many of them and that is quite interesting as you walk through a city and you get lots of different biomes as you walk through but for now we'll keep that off and we'll just make a wasteland map next is the create edge zone map and this number here basically makes this radiation level this little red line all the way around it sets how big that is and for our city map i suppose it doesn't matter unless you want to increase it and make the edge of your cities irradiated. The Create Towns is the super important one because this is the one where we're going to be changing lots of things in order to get lots of different types of cities and make sure that the whole map is filled in and we'll come back to that right at the end. Then we have Create Region POIs. This is basically their way of saying Wilderness POIs. We don't need those so we're going to unenable that. We will create the empty road map but what we're not going to do is bother making the side roads or the main roads so we'll, we'll decide disable both of those. And you can also disable the message there. That's a little bit annoying after you've done it a few times. But we have this update preview here, which is going to give us everything that we need. And at this final point, before we export, we're going to interrupt so we can see what's going on. There is also an update preview at this point, but that doesn't matter too much. It's a bit weird, I found. I, I don't quite understand it. You need to update the preview. And if you pause it at this point, then it doesn't really show you. You need to have a second one after that and that's where we see everything in its gorgeous state. So back to create towns and this is an 8k map and we're not quite sure initially how many actual POIs or, or randomly world generated tiles that we want on there. So what we're going to do is not change the tile size. This is 150. This is the standard tile and we begin of course by just saying I want one town. I just want one massive town that completely fits this whole map. So we need a minimum town size and a town size that are very big because I'm trying to work out as I said all, how many I need how many do I need now all of the numbers that we're going to use are written down as well and are on the discord but I'll just show you the process that I went through so I thought to myself right let's have a minimum town size of let's say 1500 and a maximum town size of 1500 and we'll just see what happens now this value here for minimum town distance when we have multiple towns we also want to um, set to zero and the minimum water distance is going to be zero not that we have any water on our map but we're just going to basically get those to zero and we're going to click run 
Well, that took a little under two minutes to generate, and we can see that we started to fill up this map nicely. What's important now is how many randomly well-generated tiles are used in the X and the Y axes. And in this case, you can obviously click on them if you want, and they highlight each one so you can count it, or you can use a graphics package to kind of zoom in and count them up. But here we have 49 by 49, which basically means that if we square 49, we multiply 49 by 49, we end up getting 2,401 and we're going to stop this process right now go back to create towns and make this 2401 and uh, 2401 meaning we're making one town with 2,401 randomly well generated tiles and it should absolutely cram this map completely Wow, and there we have it, the complete City 8K map. I'm going to click on continue, so it's going to go through the rest of all the scripting and end up generating and creating these files. We can also see that it's a little bit odd the way it does it. Well, we only have one trader, that's in the very top corner, because there is only one city here. And we can see the way it generates is it does it in this kind of diagonal method. And each of these zones, of course, are those different types of tiles that are in the game. What we want to do in a bit, though, is try and make multiple traders by making multiple towns and the really difficult bit I found was to make that happen and not leave any gaps now it doesn't really matter if you leave some gaps you can make lots of wonderful different cities with this but I do have some numbers that you can use in order to kind of make sure it is completely and utterly full but first of course once this has generated let's get into seven days to die and actually have a little sneaky look we have got here a ridiculous amount I think that's just under 300,000 POIs there and uh, there we go zoomed in at last and 15,000 questables again it looks amazing I wonder if it's going to break my machine so I've clicked on new game and chosen the game world 8k city that's what we decided to call it with Terragon and I've given it a game name and we're going to hit start and we'll see what we get it just takes a little bit longer than usual to load up of course because of the amount of POIs that are there well here we are we're in and uh, I'm spawning I haven't set a spawn point so I'm right in the middle of the whole map uh, but we can fly about and in order to do that I'm going to Type in DM for debug mode. Might as well get creative mode on. And we are in the wasteland, so I'm going to type weather space fog space zero just to get rid of that so I can see everything. Now let's check my settings because everything's working fairly well at the moment, I think. Pretty good. I'm walking about. I have set the video settings. Everything's pretty much on full, but I've set the mesh distance only to 500. If I make this 2000 and we give it a little bit of an opportunity to load everything in, you can see that's a little bit more jolty. But if you are playing in the uh, in any city, it is usually better to change that option just so it, it works well. It goes right down to 100, but then you don't see very far at all. So I like this option. This works quite well, and I'm walking about with a little judder there, walking about with no problem. Let's go into God mode and then pick one of the corners and just start zooming over here. Now, I'm flying faster than the things are actually uh, appearing, but like they should appear very quickly. There they are. Let's go down to the coast and check it out. We have that lovely coastline with the water coming up to uh, the level that we stated and then a little bit higher, and we have the actual flat town itself. If we go to the edge of the world, we can see, if I just get to the right place so it loads up, we can see that depth. So we have our three layers of bedrock, then we have the 37 up to 40 layers of earth, stuff you can do dig into this is plenty deep enough then the water up to that level of 58 and then the world up to the level of 60 and uh, you can tweak these values and you can change what you can fit in there but uh, the values that I'm giving you ooh, nasty bear are the ones that uh, are working for me so far that we go I like it I like it but I want more cities in there and I want to get it all nice and full so we go back to create towns and now this is where the numbers game comes now I'm giving everyone a challenge if there's anyone here doing this and they come up up with unique numerical combinations to what I'm trying to achieve here then please 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 give me a message and tell me what they are because I'm going to be I've got a big list of these things for different size cities and this is where it can get a little bit confusing so let me change the maximum town count to many of them because if I get lots of them I'll get lots of traders and if I change this to say 100 and I'll have my minimum town size of one and I have my maximum town size as 103 yep it's a weird number and it's taken me a long time to kind of work this out but what this means is we're not going to get lots of towns that are one it's usually the way this I don't quite understand the algorithm at all but whatever you do you end up getting somewhere about three quarters of the way between one and 103 and if you run it 
more than once you get the same layout every single time so it's quite a simple algorithm it's not putting much it's not putting anything random in there at all but if we set this going so 101 and 103 on the max town min town size max town size on an 8k map with all the other settings i've got which means that this is the size of a square well i'll show you what we get and there we have it just taken one minute, 40 something seconds there. And you can see now we have, let's zoom in, what's that say? 24 traders, just over 200,000 uh, POIs in there. Plenty of tier fives too. And in here, you can see that same kind of shape going on. It's the way it generates in each town. We have this kind of diagonal lines all the way through, but it means as you're walking through this place, you're gonna keep coming across different zones, which is gonna be very, very nice. And 24, Four traders well that's going to keep you occupied trying to get your hands on all of those unfortunately it keeps doing this a lot and putting traders right next to each other but hey multi traders is a good idea um, if you're on something this complicated now if I click continue it's going to overwrite over the previous map in my 8k city folder so be aware of that because you'll want to kind of like maybe make multiple copies um, from your um, directories for seven days to die um, and if you want to save them all just all you do is just copy the directory elsewhere and uh, you know give it a different name and it will just add to your generated worlds list and there we go new world has been generated now just checking another little bit I might as well share with you there's also this button here which allows towns uh, to spawn near the edges of the world if you click on this it doesn't make too much difference but it can shift everything very slightly and if you change the water level a little bit lower say from I think 58 to 48 with the settings I have here well then you can actually spawn 51 by 50 one you can get even more randomly well generated tiles in there which is a hell of a lot more POIs uh, but then I haven't found the numerical combination I needed in create towns in order to fill every single square so it's a little bit tricky it can be you know it can be a bit mentally taxing let's say but of course we can also do this with different size maps now because of the length of this video I'm going to quickly go through what you need for a 4k map but I've already generated 16k maps and we're going to be adding more very very soon on the discord so you know if you want to try something computer breaking download the 16k and i'll do the 4k now because that's more likely what people are going to actually play so let's move to 4K. If I go back to basic, uh, the world file that I want now, I've made a folder called 4K City, and in that I placed the 4K height map. So I need to go to import height map, change this to the name I gave it, which was 4K Gen HM PNG. We also need to change the set world size, or the whole thing's going to crash on us. So I'm going to click down here to uh, 4K map, and then everything else is the same. Everything else just looks absolutely beautiful when it should work most of the time uh, for you now we've got to we've got to check because the one thing that could change is the water elevation but we'll try one very quickly to start with and see if we've got to tweak that and then i'm going to go to create towns and for this one we're going to have a one town count with 529 pois in it which i'll do for minimum and maximum and then we'll hit run and see what we get Ah, there we go. Now it's really quick to make these maps because uh, it's, it's a lot smaller and we've got absolutely nothing. Uh, and the reason it's showing nothing is because there isn't enough room to put this one city. And this is where the tweaking comes in. And in this case for a 4K, I'll press stop to stop that. It's because the water's too high. It's encroached in too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this back down to 48 and then hit run. And there we go. So what have we got? We've lowered the water level and it's given us loads and loads of room to put a map. So it's, uh, it's not exactly the square that I thought it was. So we can fit even more in here, which is fantastic. But the problem is, is when it's putting in this last block, sometimes with the water at these levels, it uh, it doesn't quite fit the last one in and it, it ends up not placing a city. So what we're going to do is we're going to go somewhere in between uh, 48 and 58, just so we get rid of this block here and we should get the full thing that we're looking for. So pressing stop again, going to the edge of town. I don't know, oh, not to the edge of town, sorry, to the flat water map. And I'm going to sit there and go, I don't know, let's bung in 52 and see where it goes. 
And there we go, it's worked. So now we have a 23 by a 23 map. Uh, it's got 529 randomly well-generated tiles in there. It's all looking lovely, and it wasn't able to place at the top and on the corners here uh, those extra POIs. And this, these are the numbers that you've got to tweak and mess around with. So we'll stop this, and I'll go back to towns now. So now we know this is working, I can give you a, a combination, one of the several combinations that I have for these values that will give us some mixed cities. So for this one, for a 4K, say, this one's 4K is quite easy actually to remember. It's 100, 1, and 100. And this is the easy one. All the others are odd little number combinations. We'll hit the button there, and then hopefully we'll see the same thing, but with plenty more traders. In fact, I'm hoping it will be six traders, because if so, there it is. My notes are correct. Let's zoom into that. Yep, six traders. We have 44 tier fives in there, all looking good. And uh, yeah, it's, again, we can see those lines in there. There's the way it's generated. I'd love to know the algorithm behind it. But uh, I think the only other way to really change it is to go and change the seed. And of course, you can, you can slap in any old number here and you'll see what you get. Of course, I'm going to click continue now, because this is the one I really want to see, because this is going to be a bit less taxing on the computer. So here we are in the 4K world, looking lovely. The edges look good. Everything that I need. There's horrible carps. I'm sure there's a few bears about. I'm a little bit wary here. But uh, what a tough challenge. Last thing that we need to do is quickly run this again and see if we can get multi-biomes on the one map. <laughs> So yes, let's do that. Back to the expert settings. All we need to do now is create a noise bio map. We're going to enable that, hit run, and I'll show you what we get. And there we go. Only took a few seconds to run that one. And uh, we have this biome associated with this map. You can see it's on the preview here, just on the edges. So as you walk in, you could go from like one type of region to another. And each part of the cities will all act differently. Well, it's been good fun today. And uh, I'm sure it's not going to be as straightforward when you try it. I don't quite know how good my instructions are. I'm going to I'm gonna make this uh, map right now by hitting continue. Um, I hope you enjoyed. It. I hope it's been helpful, but I would really love it if I can find some other people who are into this and they want to have conversations with me and uh, enjoy uh, making some really cool maps on Terragon. So enjoy your city map. Keep an eye out, of course, because there will be more videos soon on this very topic, because of course we have Alpha 21 coming out very soon, and that will include hopefully a whole load more of POIs. And as if you know my channel, you know that POIs are certainly my thing. Thank you for watching today. I hope you have a glorious and wonderful time playing these things. Please, 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 out of all the videos I say, come over to Discord and share your knowledge. The only way I'm going to get better is if you help me out. So click on whatever comes up in front of you on this lovely screen here. Mash all the good buttons below and I will see you very, very soon. Goodbye!